Dear Brotherhood, this video is scary for me to shoot and that's exactly why I'm doing it. I'm really gonna open up here and share some deeply personal stories about my life, my dreams, my mistakes, and the vision I have for the Fit Father Project and the future. Things are changing right now in our society. You can probably feel it too. Our systems that used to be stable and trustworthy are no longer. I'm sure you've realized by now that corrupt pharmaceutical companies put profits over human health. Over 70% of people in America are overweight, taking cocktails of expensive pills, and becoming even weaker and more dependent on a broken system of fake food and Band-Aid medicine. Cancer cases in people under 50 are up nearly 80% in the last three decades. If this were about health, we wouldn't have any of these epidemics. Our government doesn't represent our will, the will of the people. We have a dishonest media spouting so much lying, nonsense, and intentional distractions. And it doesn't matter how you see things politically, right, left, center, it's all a sad joke. Politicians are bought and paid for by corporations, truly only interested in their own careers and profits. Our culture is sick. We're stressed to the max, eating fake processed foods, being fed an endless stream of garbage entertainment that's making us dumber, weaker, and more distracted. Our kids are addicted to games, to phones, to drugs. We're not getting outside anymore and connecting in nature like we used to. The ancient Romans had the Colosseum to distract the masses and keep them in check. Today, we have the TV, iPhone, Netflix, Hollywood, and the music industry. God and virtue are no longer at the center of our homes and our hearts. We've lost our real connection to one another. We've lost our health and our inner strength. Our society is sick. And many of us are waking up and saying, this isn't what I want, not for myself or for my family. And I know it's not what you want for your family either. Because we have the God-given ability to thrive, to experience health and energy on all levels, physically fit, mentally sharp and clear, and emotionally and spiritually connected. And right now, I am being called to a deeper level of service. I am called to lead this Fit Father and Fit Mother community beyond simply focusing on health and fitness into a community focusing on even deeper whole person growth. And I want you with me on this. I started the Fit Father Project and Fit Mother Project 10 years ago with the aim of becoming the best fitness program in the communities for busy parents over 40. We achieved that. Now it's my dream for the FFP and FMP to become the best place for you to continue living a healthy lifestyle and further your growth as a man, as a father, and to become a stronger leader for your family in body, mind, and spirit. But maybe you've been playing a bit small. And I know this is possible because I've been playing a bit small too. There's a deeper level of commitment, of growth, and of power for each of us to unlock. And I truly want to help you unlock all of that. To help your entire family break free from the sick society, and to come into true community and deep fellowship with like-minded men who are here to help you grow and succeed in all the most important areas of your life. Nobody is fixing this broken system for us. We must fix ourselves and our families. And to do that, each of us must step into a greater level of health, leadership, service, and meaningful relationships inside this community. Now, I'm about to be very vulnerable with you, completely honest. I'm gonna tell you three deeply personal stories of my life that have shaped me as a man, as a father, and as a leader of this community. Each of these stories is deeply painful for me. These are the pivotal experiences of my life that have tested my strength, my faith, my ability to persevere and heal, and all these experiences also help me realize what truly matters most in life. And as I share my story, I want you to think about your story, your family, your future, and I want you to ask yourselves, what are you committed to experiencing this year? And what are you willing to take a stand for? I'm also making you a special invitation to wait for you to join me in this Fit Father community in this new experience of powerful living this year. If you want to skip my personal stories and just read about the powerful new direction of the Fit Father Project and the special invitation I'm making you to join our new and improved yearly membership, you can scroll below and learn more. This is the first story. Roughly two years ago, I became a dad. This is my daughter, Brooke. I love her with all of my heart. She turns two in just a few months. I remember holding Brooke moments after she was born, my heart completely ripped open with love, feeling how perfect she was. Covered in blood and slime, I'm holding Brooke to my chest, bursting out in tears. I am feeling so thankful to God for this gift and miracle of life, the responsibility and blessing of being her dad, and all the beautiful experiences that lie ahead. And in that moment, I also finally understood my own dad. As you probably know, my own father died from cancer when he was just 42 years old. I was nine at the time. And as I'm holding Brooke, I could feel how much my dad loved me and I felt his pain of losing me and our family as he was slowly dying far too young. I understood why he fought so hard for us, to provide, to live. 
I understood the immensity of his love through my own love for my daughter. And I'm sure you know this feeling too, holding your own kids in your arms. When I was three, my dad had his first grand mal seizure. He fell out of bed, writhing on the floor. We found out that day he had terminal brain cancer. Imagine you just got a terminal diagnosis, looking at your kids and your partner, realizing how short life really is, and knowing that you do everything to fight for just a few more days. My dad decided to fight too. He underwent emergency brain surgery, followed by chemotherapy, radiation, the whole works. My dad's first surgery removed a chunk of his skull and his brain. He had giant gashes running down his head that looked like canyons. He experienced brain damage from the surgery and he lost control on the entire left side of his body. In the years that followed, my dad would still play catch with me. He'd put the baseball mitt on his right hand, catch the ball, take the mitt off, throw the ball back to me and put the glove back on. He still showed up for work, he still did his best to be a dad, and he was a great dad, yet without his full health, strength, and energy, he could only do so much. Several years later, the cancer came back. I think my father knew he was going to die, but he didn't want to accept it, because that meant saying goodbye to me, my mom, and the little brother, and truly accepting the pain and fear that he wouldn't be able to provide for us or protect us anymore. And I felt so lost at that time. My dad was in a hospice bed, my parents' master bedroom slowly dying, and I was filled with so much anger and confusion. One afternoon, I went down to the local basketball court to blow off some steam. I was playing rough with the other boys, and as I'm jumping up for the ball, I was pushed from the back, and I fall down on my arm, and it snaps in half. A total V. All the boys scream and run away, and I'm in shock, looking at my mangled arm, and I begin the mile walk back home. As I open the front door, I see my mom, and I burst out in tears. I can't imagine what she thought at that moment. Her husband's dying in the bedroom, her oldest son has a broken arm, who knows where my little brother Nick was. Mom rushes me to the emergency room where I stayed overnight for surgery. She couldn't stay because she needed to go home to be with my dad and my little brother. The surgeons put my arm in a hanging contraption to reset the bones. This was my first experience of real pain as they cracked my bones back into place, a foreshadow of experiences for me to come. That night my mom was so scared, her life was literally falling apart. Her husband is dying, praying her son wakes up from anesthesia. She's sitting next to my dad's bed, holding his hand, and she whispers in his ear, Peter, I want you in that hospital room with Anthony tonight. If you need to go, go now. And that was the moment my dad let go. He died right then and there. A final gesture of my father's love, it brought him peace to be with his son. I found out dad died the next day when mom picked me up from the hospital. We buried dad a week later, and my life changed forever. Imagine what it would be like for your kids to find out that you died. To not be able to say goodbye to them. To think about all the things you still want to do and experience with them. There was this hole in my heart and out of it poured so much anger, sadness and questions for God. Why did this happen? What was next? Was I going to be okay? Was my family going to be okay? And it wasn't just my sadness. It was seeing my mom break down and cry in the closet. My confused little brother asking me, when is dad coming home? And me having to tell him that he wasn't. I saw my mom scramble to hold our family together, and how the stress of that weighed on her. She took the role of protecting and providing, loving and nurturing, all while navigating her own broken heart and healing. A few months later, my arm had healed, and my mom gave me a pair of my dad's old dumbbells as a gift. And I was so sick of feeling sad and helpless, and a fire started to burn in that hole in my heart, and I filled it with anger and determination. I vowed to become someone, to make something of my life, to become so strong that cancer couldn't touch me and I started to train. Every night after my mom tucked me in for bed, I'd get up, pulled the dumbbells out from underneath my bed, and I began to exercise. I did curls, squats, and push-ups until I was exhausted. I did so many push-ups in the corner of my bedroom, there were permanent handprints on the floor. And as I got stronger, I started to see more light. I started to feel better and more empowered, and I had the life-changing realization. I realized that through my will and determination, I could transform my pain and weakness into strength, and I became even more dedicated. I exercised every day, I started eating healthier food, and I channeled my inner fire into excelling at fitness and in school because I desired to become someone great, someone of significance, someone who is strong, muscular, smart, and powerful, a father like you, with the power and opportunity to provide for, love, and lead a family. In university, I began competing in bodybuilding. I won shows and gained national recognition. In medical school, I graduated at the top of my class, and I started building health websites to share my fitness knowledge to help others. It all started from that hole in my heart that I filled with fire, with muscles, with accomplishment, and with ego. I began to think I was hot shit, young, strong, confident, and successful, and this begins my second story, 
my next crash. In my final year of medical school, I decided to take a skiing trip with a close friend to Durango, Colorado. We were both experienced skiers and we were fueled with the testosterone of youth. I had an intuition this day to slow down, but I ignored it and I kept charging down the slopes harder than ever. I'm carving down a steep hill around 30 miles per hour. I jump and I immediately knew something was very wrong. It was one of those slow motion moments. My skis cross in the air and I hit the ground hard. My skis exploding off my feet and I am thrashing out of control, tumbling head over feet, bracing for dear life. The full force of my momentum is immediately stopped as I slam into a 70 foot pine tree and my right leg explodes into pieces. My arm is broken too. And when I open my eyes, I look up and I see that my leg is snapped in half. I wiggle my fingers and toes, realize I'm not paralyzed, and the greatest pain of my life consumes me. Ski patrol comes and gets me off the slopes and I head immediately into emergency surgery. And the surgeon said the only reason I didn't die right there and bleed out from the shattered bones cutting my arteries is because my leg was so densely muscled from all my exercise that it absorbed a large part of the shock and quite literally saved my life. Just like the morning in the hospital I found out my dad died, I found myself in the hospital again this time with a broken leg, and I knew again that my life was forever changed. I underwent six reconstructive surgeries on my leg, including several different rods and screws in my femur. I experienced a series of near-fatal blood clots, countless hours of physical therapy, learning to walk again, and I even underwent a leg lengthening procedure where surgeons sawed my femur in half, inserted a magnetic rod that rotates and lengthens, and I spent six weeks in Florida slowly lengthening my right leg. If you've ever had a significant injury, you know how challenging it can be physically and mentally. I wasn't a father at the time, but I had this dream of holding my daughter, standing barefoot in my backyard grass with even length legs, and that image pushed me through recovery. The physical healing I began to experience was really just a vehicle for deeper work God had in store for my life. I had to face the realization that I almost killed myself even earlier than my dad died purely because of my ego. The will that I developed in response to his death had gotten out of control. Hotshot Anthony was now crippled, learning to walk again, and in such a destroyed physical state, I finally surrendered. My personal will had taken me so far to build up my body and then to foolishly destroy it. My plan clearly wasn't working, and so I opened my heart, I began to pray, I began to meditate, and I called out to God. And I learned to quiet my mind and receive deep inner guidance and healing from within. And I experienced tremendous physical pain, and I learned to be okay with that pain. I learned to forgive myself I began to understand who I was, the essence of my being that was deeper than my ego and who I thought I was. No longer Anthony, the stud doctor fitness guy, I came to know myself as a child of God, an expression of life, and in time I found love in my heart for myself, and I knew that same love that I felt at the core of my being also exists in all of us. Sure, we have different stories, different families, challenges and triumphs, but we are the same. Because the truth is that we are not our egos or our personalities. We are beings in the shared experience of life. And we're here to grow, to connect, and to follow the unique path that's unfolding for each of us. Because as iron sharpens iron, so too does one man sharpen another. This spiritual awakening brought a whole new meaning to my work. My heart opened up and it became crystal clear to me that I am here to make good use of all of my crashes and the challenges that I've experienced. To help other people experience the gift of health, to overcome their challenges, and for me personally to become a friend of all that I encounter in the spirit of love and service. I was no longer living for my personal glory, but for God's glory. And I knew my calling and the path was to make my life truly meaningful by using my hands for the sake of goodness and service. Now, I'm not sure what you believe, if you're religious, spiritual, or not at all, and I'm not here to persuade you in any way, but I am certain that you've had the life experience of knowing and committing to something deeper than yourself of making sacrifices and laying down an old way of living that no longer serves you and taking up the responsibilities of a new higher path that you know will lead you to where you wanna go. And so begins my third and final story. In the middle of this healing process, I met and married my wife, Paige. When Paige and I met, we had instant chemistry. She thought I was a little strange with my intense focus on health and she didn't understand my connection to God, but we wanted to make a life together. After a few years of dating, we got married, bought a house, had our daughter, Brooke, and began building our family. After Brooke was born, things got tougher between Paige and me. It wasn't just the sleepless nights or the change in our way of life. I was leaning even deeper into my faith, into my mission to serve, and our views on the future of the business and our lifestyle did not align. Paige didn't share the connection of the faith that was now completely directing my life. And I became so on fire for this mission 
to help all my brothers and sisters experience the greatest level of health, strength, and well-being possible. At home, I constantly talked about God, service, and the mission, and Paige felt like we were growing apart and she was losing her common ground with her husband. I began to change how I was thinking, how I spoke, and even how I dressed. Less fancy clothes, more deep conversations, more humility and focus on service. I knew I couldn't force Paige to see things the way I did, and I felt the divide growing between us two. And it was so painful to feel us drifting, yet I know there was no turning back. I had received this call for greater service. I had already answered it in my heart, and it was changing me to my core. After months of deep discussions and feeling so many emotions, Paige and I finally gained clarity. We decided to lay down our marriage, and we separated this year. We looked into the future, saw that we had very different visions of life. And we both want Brooke to grow up with two parents who are living authentically and who are genuinely happy. So we decided to separate while Brooke is still young because we figured it would be easier for her to navigate this transition now than when she was older. And we wanted to spare her from a future of her parents being divided on very different wavelengths. And this divorce is one of the most humbling experiences of my entire life. It's an experience I never expected to have and my heart has ached all year. A lot of the ache is because of the sadness of separating from Paige and not seeing my daughter Brooke every day, but also knowing what this means for me inside. Truly stepping into a life that expresses these values of health, service, and goodness. For me to go deeper than ever before into what I experience as my true mission and calling in full trust and faith. And I know you have a calling in your heart too, because we're human and calling is what our hearts do. So I want you to ask yourself, imagine what your life is like this year what it would look like to really allow yourself to answer your inner call, to follow a life that's most true and aligned for you. A life where you are most expressed, most honest with yourself, most committed to your health and your deepest values. And even saying and doing things that absolutely scare you because you know it's aligned with your higher path. And that's what I'm inviting you to experience this year alongside me in this Fit Father Brotherhood. This community is building upon the foundation of our world-class health programs and we're expanding our reach to whole person growth. We're taking a stand to be the central hub and community to help you become the father, the leader, and the best version of yourself. So you can build physical, mental, and emotional strength. So you can improve your relationships. So you can move away from habits and environments that no longer serve you and move towards more connection with your family, your community, and your mission. That's the father I wanna be for my daughter. And because that desire is in my heart, I know it's on your heart too. Because we are the same at our core. And I know you are also here to express your God-given gifts and become the best version of yourself at every age. And I'm happy to share that our daughter, Brooke, is thriving. She loves Paige and me so dearly, and she feels so secure, loved, and connected through this transition in her two households. And I'm also proud to say that Paige and I did it all without lawyers or any mess. We create a healthy new partnership as co-parents in a loving way for this next chapter ahead. I imagine if I could talk to my dad right now, he'd laugh. I know he'd be very proud of the man I've become, all the unsuspected challenges I've experienced that have forged my character, and most importantly, where I'm heading next. He'd be proud that I've become a man willing to have these deeper vulnerable conversations, to engage life and my fellow humans on these very deep levels, and to take a stand for health, for leadership, family, faith, and service amidst a world that is pushing people into weakness, distraction, fear, disease, and dependency. My team and close friends told me this was a potentially bad business move to share these stories and expand this Fit Father mission in our conversations beyond the fitness stuff that we do so well. But I feel like I haven't served you all the way. And with the direction society is heading right now, we need these deeper conversations and these values at the forefront of our lives in addition to the bedrock of fitness. We need powerful parents gathered in community, men who are willing to come together in the spirit of self-improvement to support one another and to stand together as a beacon of light, strength and goodness and love in opposition to the darkness of this world. I am here to call dads up, to change their lives and their families, to become strong and healthy people of service and to join this Fit Father project where all this is happening. We are a group of dads committed to living more powerfully this year. We are people who understand that health and strength is far more than just fitness. It's on all levels and developing that holistic strength is a journey that we can all take together. And this brings me to my actual invitation for you. I am inviting you this year to join me in the new and improved Fit Father Project. I'm inviting you to commit to yourself with a yearly membership, to fully experience the immense value and power that this program and community will bring into your life. As a yearly member, you get our complete library of world-class health programs that will help you make any health transformation you desire, like tens of thousands of men before you. And you're gonna get all the deeper stuff too. In the community, we're actively cultivating health and strength on all levels. 
We're working on how to improve our mental and emotional health and resilience, how to improve our most important relationships, how to deepen our connection to personal values and faith, how to lead our families to greater health and well-being, and how to become a person of service and a force of goodness in your community. All of this is happening inside the Fit Father Project. It's happening inside our app, it's happening in our community, and in our hearts as Fit Fathers. This is where I'm heading, and I want you with me. I want you with this brotherhood. I want to share this journey with you, and I can't wait to stand in utter amazement at how powerful you become and how far you go with us in this new year.